All right, so we're going to move on to the stator side since uh, we're missing some clutch, some clutch pieces <laughs> on the clutch side. Some clutch pieces. Did you catch that? Did you catch that? Yeah. All right, so, yeah, we got some back-ordered parts for that. Um, so, anyway, we're going to move on to the stator side, which is going to be uh, the alternator side. Flywheel, alternator, uh, stator, of course, that's what it's called, but... As long as we got this nice clean slate to work with right here, let's just go ahead and install the uh, reverse and neutral sensors and get those torqued down. So basically, they're the same. They just This is the reverse sensor on top, neutral sensor on the bottom. So let's just get those in there. Let's torque them down, shall we? The reverse and neutral sensor get torqued down to 10 foot-pounds. So let's go ahead and set up our torque wrench and get those babies torqued down. And they take a 14, 14 millimeter, 10, 10, all right, now that we got those hooked up, and we're sitting right here, let's just go ahead and put in our drain plug, we got a magnetic drain plug, make sure that it catches uh, any, any stray metal that's floating around through there, uh, I'll put a link to that as well if you want to purchase one of these. It's a cool looking little color and it's got a magnet on the bottom to uh, snag any rogue metal floating around in your motor if need be. And we'll just throw that right in here for the time being with the crush washer. Alright, so this is a 14 and we're not going to torque it. We're just going to make sure we uh, just snug it down. That's all you want to do. It's got a crush washer on it so you just want to make sure it gets snug. Now, we can move on to the, to the nitty gritties. So now that we have the reverse sensor and the neutral sensor and the drain plug in, now we can uh, go to installing the flywheel and the magneto and the one-way clutch bearing and uh, basically the starter clutch and all that good stuff. So, without further ado, let's get on down to it. First off, yours probably, it depends, if you need a new starter clutch like I did, uh, you're going to have to disassemble yours. Six, basically we bought brand new bolts and everything, so they're basically uh, six Allen bolts that hold this baby on. And I've already taken them off at Liberty. Uh, you, under, you, you guys all know how to take bolts apart. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. Now, for reassembly, uh, the way it's going to work here, you can see in my diagram I have down here, uh, it shows the direction that it fits. And uh, these diagrams are available at motosport.com. Look up your year and search for OEM parts, and there's a diagram for pretty much anything you need. Uh, anyway, so you can see here this thing faces this way. And basically it's going to lay down on here, like so. And then the Allens are going to come up from the inside of here and snag them. But what we need to do is we need to get the, the one-way bearing in there. And it fits on, just like you can see in the diagram, it fits on like so. So, so these little ridges right here that, that are uh, sticking out, you can see this one sticks out a little farther than this one. This one has some raised ridges. They go into this little groove right here. So, it fits like this, so it fits flush. And then this will fit face down on here. So, let's go ahead and uh, fit that thing where it belongs. You want to try to line up a couple of the holes if you can, you know. It doesn't really matter. We can spin it. But yeah, it's going to fit on just like so. And then, this guy... You get the old uh, Allens, and you gotta watch out because this thing's magnetic. <laughs> That's why they call this a magneto. Uh, anyway, what I like to do is just uh, get it where I need it to be and set it down, because then, voila, that's so much easier to work with. All right, so let's get these bolts in and get them torqued. With these bolts, we are definitely going to use some red Loctite because we do not want this uh, coming apart ever inside of there, so 
let's just red Loctite these guys and uh, be done with it. And be careful now, it's magnetic, remember? So I'm just going to get them started right now by hand because uh, the magnet. God damn it. All right, so now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do this the easy way. I'm just gonna buzz them all down real fast because this thing is goddamn magnet. So you wanna get a crisscross pattern going and just get them, uh, just get them a little bit uh, started. That's all I wanted to do. Then we're going to torque these guys to 22 foot-pounds, but in order to do that, I'm going to uh, need to, I'm going to get me a rag put in there so I don't damage the uh, ends because I need to hold it. And you can use a wrench also right here. Uh, I believe it's a 32 millimeter, but I'm just going to do it this way. 22! Twenty two, twenty two, twenty two, twenty two, twenty two. Now that those are torqued, we can um, move on. Okay, so in order to test this to make sure that you got it to installed properly that's what it should look like but in order to test it uh, all you really need to do is take your your uh, drive gear with uh, this side right here pointed in and just install it onto here and make sure that it spins the right direction when it's sitting like this it should spin counterclockwise freely and then it should not be able to spin the other direction so it shouldn't be able to go clockwise which is cool and then just take it back apart again because all it's just it's not press fit so it just comes right out again all right so that works properly we got it torqued down so let's get this dog together shall we make sure that you uh slam that thumbs up down there make sure that you subscribe and make sure that you turn that bell notification on also so that you can get uh, updated whenever I put out new videos. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to uh, hit this inner bearing with some uh, little more assembly lube because you can never, uh, never have enough of this stuff. And then we'll, uh, we'll take some of this excess and we'll dump it onto this, uh, onto this washer here. Spacer, I guess you would call this a spacer. So this will go in first. It just slides on like so. And our next step is gonna be the double roller bearing here. That's gonna go next. And we're gonna to want to uh, get some assembly lube up on this guy for sure. And on the inside. And especially this one, this is a brand spanking new one, so it's never seen oil or anything else. So you want to make sure you get this one lubed up pretty good. And it just fits on like so. You want to make sure there's no play in it. No side to side, it works beautifully. 
All right. Next, we're going to uh, install our primary drive gear. So the way this thing is going to work is you want to face in this direction out. You want this uh, fatter part out because that's going to uh, catch the the uh, starter clutch. So we'll want to put a tiny little bit of a assembly lube in here. There's already some around the outside of here also and on the bearing. So anyway, we'll just drop this sucker right on right on right on like so make sure there's no play in it and make sure it spins freely and it looks good and then the next guy is going to be this uh, spacer washer and we'll just throw a little bit of uh, assembly lube onto this guy just a little bit. We've already got a lot in here anyway, so we just want to get a little coat on it is all. And it looks like this is a uh, same. It's a universal. So whatever way you feel necessary, it just drops right on in here. And then the next step is going to be to uh, install our Woodruff key. So the Woodruff key is going to basically go right there. It looks like this. This is a little key and it's just going to fit right in here. And so it just needs to stick in there and then we'll tap it down with a hammer. And I like to use a combination. Sometimes it goes right in. Other times it does not. Uh, other times I like to use a combination. We'll see what happens here. So we just give it a few uh, few love taps. And this one does not seem to be going in nicely. So we will take our little uh, punch here. You line up this little guy right here. Well, first, before we do anything, you know what time it is. Before we do anything, let's get some assembly lube up in here. Definitely want these rollers to get uh, assembly lubed up. All right, now that you got the Woodruff key tapped in there, you want to make sure that you get the front of it tilted down a little bit so that it can engage with the magneto. All right, once we got that uh, all lubed up and ready to rock and roll, now we're going to line up the slot here with the key. And you want to make sure it goes on the gear. All right. And then once that's all the way down, now we can get our flywheel bolt in there. Basically what you want to do with the flywheel bolt is you want to uh, dip that sucker in some oil. So you want the threads uh, oiled up. And this washer also, you want that uh, oiled up. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to torque this thing to 94 foot pounds. All right, so going about torquing this guy right here, uh, you can do it a bunch of different ways. If you happen to have some extra tools, that's nice too. You can you can put yourself a, a flywheel holder. Tusk makes one. Uh, just wraps around here with a with a rubber piece that gets tightened down against it, and you can hold it. Put a bar in it. You have a gear. Uh, there's a gear grabber where you can uh, latch onto the gears and hold those. Uh, I'm going to use this right here, where I'm going to hold on to that, and I'm going to uh, hook it on the bottom so that it can't move, and then I'm going to torque it to 94 foot-pounds. So, okay. 94. All right, so now that the flywheel bolt is torqued down, we can put in our starter reduction gears. 
before we put our uh, starter reduction gear in there, let's get a little bit of uh, some assembly lube on this bad dog. And then we'll just uh, set them in there for the time being and make sure it lines up in one of the gears. We'll just rest it over here for a second and then we'll get some uh, assembly lube on our shaft, which is actually called the pin. And then we'll uh, line up the hole and throw it down into the, into the case. Just like so. And there you go. Now, it only spins one way. This is the job of the one-way bearing. So it allows you to spin it this way. But not this way. This will be uh, when we turn it. Well, it can spin this way, but that will turn the motor. But I'm already a top dead center, so I don't want to move it. Uh, which I just did a little bit, so it doesn't matter anymore, does it? We'll have to do it again. But see, now we can turn the motor. And it won't go this way. Nice. All right. Let's get this cover on there and get this goddamn show on the road. All right. So next up, now that we have um, all that assembled, we're going to assemble the stator cover, get the uh, stator in. And we're going to be dropping that sucker on here. But first, we need to assemble it. So, yeah. Here's our stator cover. And, of course, we're going to uh, be putting this stuff together. But first we need to put the uh, alternator, the stator, in to the case cover. And basically this thing only goes in one way. So what we want to do is this guy is going to go here. And this guy is going to go over here. And this guy is going to go right there. And then this little wire goes in there into the little slot. Then we'll put in the three bolts that's going to hold this uh, stator assembly down. And since this doesn't get torqued very high, 88 inch pounds, uh, approximately what, 7.3 uh, or 4 foot pounds, uh, we're going to apply a little bit of red. Red thread locker, red Loctite on here. And then we'll just tighten them down uh, finger tight first and get them all started first. We're going to put in all the bolts first and then we're going to torque them all to 88 inch pounds because they all are the same. Next, we're going to uh, hook this guy up right here. And basically the way this bracket works is it has a little holder right here which is going to go on the wire and it's going to hold the wire down. And we're going to red Loctite these as well. So let's just get that in there real fast. You want to watch out, this has got a, a magnet on it. Throw some red Loctite on there. And some red Loctite on the other one. And we'll just hand tighten these down again because we're going to come back and torque them all. Again to 88 inch pounds. And then we have our last little bracket. Before we put this guy on, we are going to uh, add a little bit of uh, some ultra black gasket maker, some Permatex. Uh, basically, this is RTV uh, silicone gasket maker. Uh, we're going to put that on here to seal it into place so it doesn't leak anything. You can use any kind of stuff that you want. Black or gray is fine. And I'm going to use gloves to uh, just smear that in there a little bit. I don't want too much of it. 
and I want it to be uh, even. Okay, so let's just slam that guy right on in there now. And then we'll of course get the excess off there because we want the gasket to seal nice, so. And that's what's really cool about having this black powder coated uh, case cover is that uh, if we get a little bit on the outside, you won't even notice it. Sweet! And you want to let this stuff dry for 24 hours before you uh, put any fluids in here. So if you're going to be doing this right here, you don't want to be uh, just dropping this in and going. You got to do this the day before. So keep that in mind. And then we have a bracket that holds this guy down. So it's going to go right in here like this. And it's going to hold, uh, hold that wire down on the bottom down here. And like all the other bolts inside of here, we're going to red Loctite this guy. Okay, now that we have all those hand tight and we got the red Loctite on them, we're going to go ahead and torque all these bolts down to 88 inch pounds. We'll start on the inside here. 88, 88, 88, 88, 88, 88. All right. And there you have it. One stator hooked up inside of our uh, left crankcase cover. All right, so before we put this uh, cover on, we're gonna have to do a, we're gonna have to put a gasket on here, of course, on the other side. So let's make sure that we get this cleaned up right here. We want good surfaces, and just use a little bit of contact cleaner. And next, what I like to do is, between any of the gaskets, I like to put a thin, just a thin layer of some, uh, some Maxima waterproof grease and between the the gaskets so that it uh in case we need to get this apart or whenever we do take it apart later they'll come the gasket will come off nicely so yeah we'll just take a thin thin layer of grease just a very thin all right so that guy's ready to go. Now we need to prep the other side. Uh, we need to prep the case side and we need to apply the gasket. And let's get on down to that. And then we're also going to be installing the uh, idler gear. All right, now we're ready for the case side. Uh, we're gonna do the same basically. We're gonna go ahead and clean up, uh, use a little bit of contact cleaner. And clean up your surface make sure you get all the stuff off there maybe I might have dripped some assembly lube or something on there so let's get uh, let's get that cleaned up and now we're gonna do the same thing we did over there we're gonna take a, a light coat of the uh, Maxima waterproof grease and we're going to line up the uh, surface so once again, if we need to get these gaskets off uh, later on, or maybe we uh, need to take them off right away, we'll be able to get them off without with, with ease. Got to be careful here. You don't want to get any grease on the gears or something like that. Uh, I don't really know that it would hurt that much, I guess. A little bit of grease, I think it might just dissolve in there anyway, but better to be safe than sorry. Try to get this back to top dead center. Right about uh, probably there or so. Next, we're gonna get our dowel pins in there. Uh, one goes here and one goes up here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of uh, anti-seize, some Permatex anti-seize. And I'm going to get gloves on for this because you don't want to get this stuff on you. So, we're gonna try to get just a little bit on here but you can never get just a little bit with this stuff. So, we're going to just take a good old chunk and put it on there. And then we'll smear it around. 
And then we'll pop this dog right on into this slot right there. And then we'll do the same with the other one. And it goes right up here. And now that our doll pins are in place, we can go ahead and put our gasket down in place. And one of the big holes right here, this goes over the top of this special uh, stud that's hanging out there. So see, this grease helps keep everything in place also. Now that we have the gasket in place, we want to make sure everything is uh, secure. This is uh, down in the in the case where it belongs, because we're going to line this up. This is going to this is going to fit right in here, right? So when we flip this over, we're going to try to we're going to connect that to that, and we're going to first line up this. We're going to slide it on through, and let's just get this dog on there. So yeah, then you try to line that up, and you get the dowel pins. Alright, now that we got that seated down on there, let's go ahead and put in our idler gear and make sure that uh, everything flows like it should before we put the bolts in and torque them down. So this baby has a pin, a sleeve, and the gear. And the gear just goes in a little hole, right? It's like so. Before we do that, though, let's get a little bit of a assembly lube up on here a little bit. And then we can just drop this baby right on in there. We'll throw some assembly lube in there a little bit. Just want to drop that in there. And then that slides right over the gears. We want to make sure that that spins like it should. Oh yeah. It's doing its thing. Doesn't go back the other way, which is what we want. Alright. So let's put these bolts in and torque them. So basically, before I started, I made us a little diagram here. This is going to show us where everything goes. And what size goes where. So... Yeah, we got the O-rings. These are our uh, our caps right here. We got a cap right here. We got an O-ring that goes on there. Uh, we have an, another, the timing hole cap, which goes here. Uh, we have an O-ring that goes on there. And we got 40 millimeters, 60 millimeters, 50 millimeters. We got all kinds of millimeters going on. So I got these all laid out. Let's go ahead and put these in and get to town, shall we? This is uh, gonna go here. And we'll just go around this around the horn. Here. 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 And then this one gets the uh the wire holder. Which it's gonna sit like so. And then this guy gets a little 10 millimeter uh flange nut. And that's all for these. These are the other cover. Let's make sure all these roll down. Now we can uh, apply a little bit of pressure and let's go crisscross. So we'll go this one. Okay, now that we got those all spun down, we can torque them. And they're gonna get torqued to 88 foot pounds. I mean, 88 foot pounds. Woo! That would suck, huh? 88 inch pounds. And we'll just start down here. Eighty-eight. 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 88 88 All right, 
And then the number 10 up there, I don't know what the torque spec is on that guy, but I'm only going to go 88 on it. 88. All right, now that we have those torqued down, we're going to put on a few pieces of uh, stuff that we have uh, some bling going on here. We're going to we're going to put on the old uh, the crank the crankshaft uh, cover. We're going to put on the timing hole cover. Uh, we're going to put on the case saver. We're not going to put on the uh, the gear shifter, but uh, we have that, and we also have the cover which is also powder coated. Uh, we're not gonna, we're gonna put it on just for uh, making it look good, but uh, we're not gonna torque out of this stuff because we still need to make adjustments and do stuff like that. And we also have our brand new starter too, which is gonna slide through right about uh, right there. It's gonna slide in there. Uh, but we're not gonna put that on right now either because we still have some more stuff to do on the other side of the motor and the starter will just get in the way, so we're not going to mess with any of that, but let's get down to some business. Make sure you crank that thumbs up. Thumbs up. Make sure you hit that thumbs up down there, uh, folks, uh, and make sure that you subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you get uh, notified whenever we put out new videos. Uh, motor's going together. Not as fast as I'd like, but it's going together. Um, we're just waiting on some pieces on the other side. Uh, I'd like to have done the uh, clutch side first, but hey, here we are on the stator side, and uh, it's about put together, so let's continue on, shall we? All right. All right, so first what we're going to do, we're going to uh, we're gonna install our crankshaft uh, hole cover, and this one's by Tusk Racing, but the OEM ones look exactly the same, uh, except for they're not red. They are silver. <laughs> Anyway, this takes a this takes an O-ring, and it goes right on here. And what we're going to do is we're going to put a little bit of oil around it. We're going to oil it a little bit to make sure that it doesn't dry rot and get all nasty and gross. So we'll put it on there, like so. We're not going to do any torquing, but I'll tell you what the torque specs are in case you're at this step where you want to just continue. Uh, Everything we're doing here is 88 inch-pounds. So this cover is 88 inch-pounds. And it just spins right on in here. So you would torque it now to 88 inch-pounds, but we're not going to do that here today, right now. And same way with the timing hole cover as well. And it gets a little bit of oil on the O-ring. Preserve that nicely by coating it with some oil and then it goes the same way it just goes right on uh, right on in there and it gets torqued to 88 inch pounds as well and now let's uh, throw our case saver on there I have an aftermarket one that's uh, kind of generic it won't do a lot but it looks cool so we're gonna use it this one has allen bolts and it has a little uh, a raised uh, sleeve down here and that is gonna go on the bottom to, to clear this guy right here this little thing so for the case saver we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna blue Loctite these we don't want the case saver coming off so let's go ahead and get the top one started just get it started because the next one, we're going to need to put a little sleeve on there. But let's make sure we uh, hit the blue Loctite on here first. And then the sleeve goes underneath. And then we'll just zip these down by hand real fast. These are going to get torqued to 88 inch-pounds. Just like everything we're doing here, these are all going to be 88 inch-pounds, pretty much. 88 88 and now that we have those down there uh, we're gonna go ahead and put the starter cover on but this obviously this is where the starter will come through right here and the uh, shaft will will it will initiate with this bearing right here there is also two dowel pins that go in here there's one here and there's one here but we're not gonna put those in right now 
because um, we're just doing this for looks. But if you're doing yours, make sure you have these two dowel pins right here and right here. We're not going to torque any of this or do any of that right now because we're not putting the starter on. Like I said, we want uh, we want that out of the way when we work on other stuff. We still got a lot to do yet. So let's just put it on to make it look good. Because it also gets a gasket uh, that we're not going to put on right, right yet. But let's get the cool bolts on there and uh, whoo. So then it gets a bolt here, a bolt here, a bolt here. And a bolt here. Now we'll just hand tighten these down because we're not going to leave this on here. So we'll just give them a little spin down. Two, three, four. And there you go. That's what we're going to look like. Pretty badass if you ask me. And just for shits and giggles, let's drop our sprocket on there. Uh, Woo! Yeah, that's what it's going to look like. Looks pretty good, I must say. Make sure you crack that thumbs up and make sure that you uh, subscribe down there. Because, yeah, that helps me out and I can keep on going if you uh, keep on subscribing. So, yeah. Make sure you turn the bell notification on too so that you can get notified when new videos are coming up and when I uh, put out the, new, the newest version of this motor. We're getting her, we're getting her done. All right. Peace out, Girl Scouts. Woo!